Thomas Jefferson is the most complicated uh, of all of them uh, because he is probably of, of all American leaders, the one who is most uh, uh, emblematic of the Enlightenment, who has absorbed uh, Enlightenment ideas. He, of course, is the author of the Declaration of Independence, who wrote those famous words in the second paragraph. Uh, and he was also a big slaveholder. He had grown up uh, like Washington in, uh, in the midst of the Virginia Slave Society in central Virginia, but uh, had married a woman who had a lot of slaves. He had slaves and she had slaves. And uh, by the time he writes the Declaration of Independence, he owns almost 200 slaves. So he is one of the, um, one of the 100 biggest slaveholders in the whole uh, state of Virginia. And uh, it's, it's difficult for him. He's repulsed by slavery. He's, he's deeply troubled by it. He'd like to get rid of it. He makes, initially he makes a couple of moves and they, and they are repulsed very, very quickly. And that, from that he draws the, the idea that politically this is not gonna fly. This is gonna be a very difficult situation. And so he makes a number of uh, strong comments against slavery in the Notes on Virginia, the one book that he writes. And he's, he's afraid to publish the book because, uh, because of the criticisms of slavery that he has in it. But he has also other things in it that are, that are troubling, that do question uh, the capabilities of blacks that would justify slavery. So it's, it's troubled by both of these things. He, of course, uh, is still uh, making efforts in the early 1780s to end slavery, very smart efforts. He's trying through the Northwest Ordinance to ban its expansion west of the, the Alleghenies. He fails by one vote uh, to do that. After that, we don't find any effort made by Jefferson particularly to really end slavery. We find him writing letters and saying things in which he's deeply troubled, some would even say tormented by uh, the idea of slavery and holding slaves. But after the 1780s, we don't really find him uh, doing anything about it. He was deeply in debt. When he inherited indebtedness from his wife's father and he, he never got rid of the, the indebtedness, and so it was practically impossible for him to have freed slaves. He, he couldn't do that. They, those slaves were held as collateral on loans that he had made. So it's a very troubled relationship. It's been, uh, there's the added factor in the, in the late 20th century. We, we, we do know from DNA testing that he was very possibly the father of children by Sally Hemings, who was one of his uh, slave women. Um, this has not been conclusively proven, but it, uh, the circumstantial evidence does, uh, does indicate that. So he is, he is a, a very complicated figure in this, to say the least. Franklin, a uh, great American genius, uh, again, someone who's absorbing the ideas of the Enlightenment. And you can see this within Franklin's own life. In the 1740s, uh, he comes to own a few slaves. He, he uses them for household servants, uh, and he keeps a slaveholder from the 1740s till the 1780s. But by the time of the American Revolution, of course, he spends time in France. He, he knows the philosophes, he's right at the cutting edge of the Enlightenment, and he says, you know, slavery just does not comport with what we are coming to know of human nature and of how people should treat each other. And so uh, he joins the Pennsylvania Manumission Society and he frees his own slaves. So by the time of the uh, Constitutional Convention that he goes to his last real act, he is uh, an anti-slavery figure. John Adams uh, was anti-slavery almost uh, from you know, the time of the American Revolution. He is a Massachusetts man. In Massachusetts, of course, African Americans and slaves were only 3% of the population. And so uh, ideas of the Enlightenment affect uh, Adams, and it's, and it's rather easy for him to say, let's get rid of slavery. And of course, he writes that the Constitution the 1780 Constitution of Massachusetts that's later the basis for the court decision that ends slavery in Massachusetts. So he's anti-slavery from the start. He lives in a place where uh, it's not difficult to be anti-slavery. 
And so the ideas of the Enlightenment that are, that are moving him, he can act on. James Madison, like uh, uh, Jefferson, he was uh, Jefferson's very close confidant, uh, protege, and how you would term the relationships, a very close collaboration between uh, Jefferson and Madison. And, and their lives are in many ways parallel in regard to slavery. Madison was deeply troubled by slavery. Of course, he had, he's absorbed the ideas of the Enlightenment. He believes in the goals and, and uh, principles of the revolution. And he's troubled by slavery. He'd like to see it ended. Uh, but again, how do you do that? You know, how do you do it in terms of, how do you do it economically, and how do you do it in terms of uh, the biracial, building a biracial republic. So right up, sadly enough, and of course he outlives Jefferson by almost a decade, and he takes part in the last uh, debates in Virginia in the early 1830s, the last debate that will debate gradual emancipation in Virginia, and it's rejected, although he supports the idea. So uh, troubled on a tortured relationship. Again, he's someone who is constantly in debt, and uh, he, so he, he leaves his slaves to, uh, uh, to Dolly, and, uh, and, the, and only a very few are, are ever freed. Very, very deeply, it's, it's at the heart of it, really. I mean, that, it, uh, that the principle of the Declaration carried forth into the 14th Amendment to the Constitution that was adopted in 1867 that guarantees the equal protection of the laws, the fateful phrase. Uh, once that begins to be applied in the 20th century, by the, the, uh, the mid-20th century, once that begins to be applied to state actions, then it becomes the key to opening rights for women, for, uh, for other minorities, and for handicapped people. All sorts of people have been able to expand their rights built upon that idea that, uh, of uh, coming out of the 14th Amendment based upon the abolition of slavery, which has its foundation in the Declaration of Independence.